Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and module number two, the organization of living things. This is video number four and we're going to be justifying the hierarchical structural organization of organelles, cells, tissues, organs, systems and organisms. In simple terms, we're going to look at why each of these components of living things forms a bit of a hierarchy or at least some sort of an order. So I guess the first thing we need to look at is that uh, if we're going to talk about a hierarchy, then we need something that has some sort of progression. And in this case, despite the fact that we've spent an entire module looking at cells, when we look at this sort of a hierarchy, we are going from something which is uh, simple in a sense, a single cell, to something that's much more complex, a body system. In this particular module, we're going to look at uh, body systems in plants and animals. And we're going to try and understand how the organization of cells tissues and organs contributes to the specific functions associated with each of those different systems. In the last video we looked a little bit at uh, some of the different types of cells. We've also talked a little bit about uh, cellular differentiation and the process of producing specialized cells and cells that have a specific function. And those functions often link very closely to the um, structure of the cell itself and also the distribution of organelles within the cell. Whenever we look at a hierarchy like this, there are always other levels. We can go um, further below the cell level to look at some of the components within the cell. And we can also go above the system level um, to look at organisms um, and where they actually uh, fit into the entire biosphere. The important thing I think um, for you to be looking at here in terms of this hierarchy is just understanding um, how we progress from a, uh, an understanding of cells, looking at different types of cells to understand uh, what type of cells they are and the differences between them, how those cell cells group together to form tissues, how different tissues come together to form organs, and how different organs also work together as part of a broader uh, body system. So here's an example of something which is an even larger hierarchy than uh, the one that we previously looked at. Now, of course, um, if you know anything about atoms, you realize that um, just picking even atoms as a starting point is still arbitrary. There are things that are smaller than atoms. But we have to start somewhere. We have to try and understand that, particularly in this topic, when we're looking at some aspects of biochemistry, that is the interrelationship between chemistry and biology, or uh, more broadly, some of the important chemical reactions that occur. Uh, in biological organisms, then we do need to have an understanding of some of the important chemical compounds um, and also elements that are found in living things. So atoms, and there's a, there's a hundred, just a little over a hundred different types of atoms, combine together in a whole range of different ways to form a lot of compounds. And these compounds um, can fall into roughly two categories, the inorganic uh, salts mostly, and then the organic compound groups that we've looked at previously, which includes things like sugars, uh, fats, or lipids, uh, proteins, nucleic acids, and so on. When we start to put some of these chemicals together, we get these organelles. And you'll remember, um, for example, when we were looking at the uh, membrane, the cell membrane or the plasma membrane, we were looking at um, lipids the phospholipid bilayer, um, and that lipid layer being interspersed with proteins, channel proteins, proteins that were part of maintaining the integrity or strength of the membrane. So different chemicals working together to produce um, a larger structure, like for example, in this case, a plasma membrane. Each of these uh, contributes to the formation of an organelle and just as the relationship between organs and systems, smaller components of a larger system, is something that we're probably familiar with in terms of biological organization, organelles and cells have a similar kind of relationship. A, a cell, a large cell, if we want to think about the cell in that way, contains a number of very small organelles that are all critically important and that do a specific job. 
And often the type of cell um, is affected by, or its function is affected by the number and distribution uh, of different types of organelles within the cell. So these organelles contribute to the cell. The cell uh, can contribute to tissues, tissues linked together to form organs, organs to form organ systems. And of course, as I said, we could go on to organisms. And if we're looking um, in an ecological um, setting, we can look at populations of uh, particular organisms, or we can look at communities um, of different organisms all interacting with one another. And of course, uh, as I mentioned previously, the biosphere. So hierarchy is a, just a, uh, a series of levels, if you like. We arrange um, governments and, and ruling bodies on the basis of hierarchy. Uh, royalty is based on hierarchy. There's, there's a whole lot of different examples of hierarchies um, that you may be familiar with, and biological systems are no different. We're talking about some sort of progression, um, some sort of level sitting above other levels. And for us, those levels are based very much on organization and complexity. And that's what we need to look at uh, in our next section in uh, Organization of Living Things. Thanks for watching.